how's it going? It's me, Megan, and I am back with another video. If you guys are new to my channel, I am a full-time reseller on Poshmark and a few other platforms, but mostly Poshmark. And here on YouTube, I like to make reseller content. I will do what's sold videos. I will do unboxings. I'll do hauls. I'll do all that good stuff. So if that's something you guys are interested in, please make sure to like and subscribe, and that way you'll never miss one of my videos. So I actually already <laughs> recorded this video, but I forgot. Oh, as I'm forgetting again, hopefully... I have already disconnected them. Forgot that I had my headphones turned on, so all the sound was going to my headphones and not my phone. So there's no audio in my video. So I drank some coffee, I ate, and now I am back filming for the second time. So if this video doesn't come out until Monday, that is why, but hopefully I can still get this filmed and edited in time to put out today. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a great start to 2023. Um, I hope you guys had a great first week of January with reselling and with all your New Year's goals. I've had a pretty good start. Um, one of my goals was to walk every day and I've been keeping up with that even though it's been raining here. Luckily we have um, like a walking pad treadmill in our house so I keep in my goal. And we're also eating vegetarian, me and my husband for this month just to like eat less meat and that's been going well. And I've also had a goal of reading a book a month at the very least. And I already read a book this month, which is shocking for me because I'm a pretty slow reader. It was the book Station Eleven. It's like a post-apocalyptic dystopian society thing, which is right up my alley. You might have heard of the show. It's a show on HBO Max and it was really good. As far as reselling, I talked last week about I just really needed to focus on cleaning my office before I can focus on anything else. I am about 95% of the way through cleaning my office, which is great. My other goal currently is to just get through all of my death pile and either list the clothes or get rid of them because there's some stuff that I've had literally forever. And if I'm not gonna list it, I just need to donate it and move on. So yeah, I'd love to know how you're Goals are going reseller related or not. But yeah, I'm just gonna get into my sales this week. Again, I'm going over the first full week of January, the first through the seventh. And on Sunday the first, I had three sales. The first thing I sold was this pair of Mac Weldon Chino pants. You might remember last week, and I've been mentioning for a while now, kind of like every week or every other week, I'll sell one of these Mac Weldon pieces. I got a mystery box. I believe it was from Cozy Threads, but now I can't remember. I got it like last summer, but it was full of men's Mack Weldon pants. I think I got 30 pairs, 20 or 30, maybe 20. I can't remember, um, but they were each like $9 per pair. I've sold through almost all of them. I think out of all the pants, I only have two left. I got a bunch of their Ace Sweat pants, which is definitely their best seller. And something I would definitely pick up if I saw it out in the wild for a good price. Um, I've This was the only pair of chinos I got, which is good because they weren't getting a lot of attention. I sold a pair of their shorts that came in that box. And then some cargo pants, which I've sold a couple of pairs of, but I still have one left. So it was a good box overall. I'm really happy about that. Um, but these chinos did sit for a little bit. Again, I got this box like last summer, but they sold for 30 and after fees I made 24. Then I sold this Free People denim midi dress. Really cute, a little interesting. It was like a sleeveless wrap denim dress. There were some model photos that weren't as cute, um, but I found this one, which was really cute. It was like styled with a sweater and everything underneath. I think it made it much more um, appealable. Appealing? Appealing. Appealable, oh God. Um, I got this at a Goodwill a couple of months ago, maybe. Um, and the dresses at my Goodwills are $9.99 and free people I am kind of picky about because it can often be very saturated in the market and you kind of have to be careful about older versus newer styles but I did like this dress a lot. Ended up selling for $40 and after fees I made $32. And then the last thing I sold on Sunday was actually another dress. It was from the brand Saison which I think is how you pronounce it I'm not sure. I saw this dress at a Goodwill and it sounded kind of familiar, the brand, but I just thought it might have been another anthropology branded dress. So I went by it, but then I came back because I'm like, no, I think it's something good. And I looked up comps and comps were really good, even for this kind of more simple linen 
mini dress. The comps were really good. I had it listed, I want to say at 100, but someone offered me 75 and I decided to accept. And after fees, I made 60. And again, dresses at my Goodwills are about $10. Sorry if you can hear the plane going by. Um, but on Monday, January 2nd, I had four sales. The first was a flip sale. And if you are new to the channel, Flip is an online consignment app where you can sell clothes for other people or other people can sell your clothes on consignment. Um, it's Flip, F-L-Y-P. And I've been selling clothes for other people just to kind of get inventory, get more things to list and not have to pay out of pocket for these things, especially if they won't end up selling. I don't get stuck with them. I could just send them back to the person or I can work with them to donate them, stuff like that. Um, so I sold these Jeffrey Campbell white sandals. I was really hoping to get more for these. They're so cute and so trendy. But for a lot of the flip lots I have, I am coming to the 90 day mark, which you have 90 days to sell the items, but then you can extend the selling period. Um, but I'm trying to get as many things sold um, in that time period that I can. So I did end up accepting an offer of $34. After Poshmark fees, I made $27.20. And then after flip fees, I made $10.20. Then I sold this new Attack Vince Camuto leopard skirt. Again, a flip sale. Not something I pick up, even new Attacks, even at the bins. But I did like the model photo. It was really cute, really classic, and in a good size. It ended up selling for $27. After Poshmark fees, I made $19.88. And then after flip fees, I made $7.73. Then when I was in Southern California for the holidays at my in-laws, my sister-in-law actually brought over bags of clothes that she was just getting rid of um, so I could look through them and pick some stuff to sell if I wanted to. And I definitely did. I came home with like two trash bags full of her clothes. So I was really thankful for that. She did have a few Lululemon pieces in there, which is always great. These were the Toasty Tech tights. And I do think I could have got a little bit more for them but the stitching, there was like quilted stitching on the sides and they were coming undone. So I did have to note that. I did second guess about listing them at all, but they are quality leggings and I knew somebody wouldn't mind, you know, some loose stitching uh, for a good price. You know, Lululemon is expensive. So they did sell pretty quickly. They sold for 36 and after fees I made 27.08. And then the last thing I sold on Monday was a new tag black sweater, I believe by the brand Yurse. I don't really think that that is like a name brand or anything. It might be like a TJ Maxx brand or an Amazon brand. I just sold it because it was new with tags. I'd gotten it in a bulk box and it was a very, you know, classic, simple black sweater. I thought someone might like it. It ended up selling on Mercari for 15 and after fees I made 12.56. Then on Tuesday, January 3rd, I had four sales again. I sold these memorized sequin snake print pants these came from that bulk box as well and this bulk box i got really early last year um don't remember the month but earlier in the year and i just thought these pants were pretty cool you know really unique um something that i can imagine people on tiktok buying and wearing they always like to do fun interesting outfits they end up selling on poshmark for 15 and after fees i made 12. Then I sold this, the Koopal Silk Mini Dress. You might remember this if you saw my haul video I posted last Wednesday. I got this from the Crossroads Outlet in Stockton, which is about an hour away from me. I don't know if I'd go back. I loved the store. I wish it was closer. If it was, I would totally go back all the time. But it's in like, it's far away. I also <laughs> like got stuck in traffic, so it was like two hours to get there. Um, but like the roads were really bad, like closer to the, like the town that it was in. They were like literally like going on a roller coaster. Like you had to come to a full stop, go into these huge divots. It was a little scary. So I don't think I'll go back there. But if you're from the area and you're willing to check it out, it was a, it was an awesome store. They had great prices and great brands. I was hoping this would sell for more because I felt like it really followed this popular trend of preppy punk futuristic preppy, stuff like that. But I really have a hard time moving the Couples, even though it's a very expensive brand to begin with. Even if I sold this to the real real, I don't think I would have made more than what I did on Poshmark. It ended up selling for $35 and then after fees I made 28. Then I sold these Madewell drapey paper bag pants. I got these pretty recently at a local thrift store to me. 
I'm a little bit picky about Madewell. I still really like to find their trousers. I think trousers are still super trendy and people are always looking for, you know, a more modern take on those, very easy pant. And this definitely was that. Um, they ended up selling on Poshmark for 40 and after fees I made 32. I wanna say I spent maybe like $10 on those, which is my average cost of goods. Pretty much all the thrift stores in my area here. Um, then the last thing I sold on Tuesday was an Athleta purple hoodie. I got this at the bins in Portland. So earlier last year, when I see Athleta at the bins, I'm kind of bad about checking the date, which is usually on the tag. I end up picking up a bunch of older styles or just not desirable styles. I thought this was cute though, and it was in good condition. It took a little while to sell, but it did end up selling at Poshmark for 18 and after fees, I made 1440. I'm actually surprised a lot of my workout clothes aren't getting more attention or moving as much, but hopefully um, as people are kind of continuing with their goals, they'll either lose weight and need more workout clothes or, you know, get more into working out and need more workout clothes. Clothes, So <laughs> we'll see about that. And then on Wednesday the 4th, I had four sales again. I sold these ASOS Western boots. I got these at the bins in Sacramento, so not too long ago. All the shoes at the bins um, in Sacramento are individually priced. They're about $3.05, I think, which why can't they just be $3? I don't know. $3.05, which in Portland, it used to just be combined with the clothes, so it was paid by the pound, even with the shoes. And I do miss that, but you still can't really beat shoes for $3, at least not in this area. So I picked up these boots. They ended up selling for 25 and after fees I made 20. Then I sold this RD style cowl neck sweater, which I've had for a long time. I think I got it in one of the bulk boxes I received from ThreadUp. It didn't have a tag, but it did have an RN number. An RD style I don't know much about, but comp seemed like at least decent, you know, 15, 20 bucks, but it's been sitting for so long and I just had such a hard time getting rid of it because it just feels like such high quality and it's just such a cute, like basic staple to have in your closet that I've really wanted someone to buy it and enjoy it. So finally someone purchased it for 14 and after fees, I made 9.33. Then I sold this vintage 90s Ann Taylor garden print scarf and I actually got this from a bins trip that we made when we were in San Diego. There is a Goodwill clearance center, I think is what they call it, in Escondido that is kind of like the bins, like they have the regular bins out, they even have bins that you can like bend over and dig through. I hurt my back on those, so those were not very fun. But instead of paying by the pound, it's like things are individually priced or it's 15 pieces for $25. So I really just stayed long enough to get 15 pieces. I just really wanted to check it out and see what the place was all about. In case we go back down to San Diego for a longer period of time, I could go back there. And uh, yeah, it was okay. I found some good stuff. I found a Kate Spade dress, a pair of Lululemon shorts, and I got this scarf because I just saw it and I couldn't put it back. I thought it was just too adorable, vintage silk the cutest like garden print it had like vegetables and a bunch of tools on there i thought it would sell on depop but i don't even think i had time to relist it to depop because it ended up selling on poshmark for 25 and then after fees it made 20. then i sold this y2k retro nascar tank top i believe i got this at the bins i maybe in sacramento i don't remember if it was sacramento or portland uh, but I know like people really like NASCAR, especially the t-shirts, like the really graphic t-shirts with the cars on them, people like. But since this was retro and it said NASCAR, I was gonna give it a shot. It ended up selling for $18 on Poshmark and after fees, I made $14.40. And then on Thursday, I had six sales, a lot of flip sales this day. Uh, the first one though was not a flip sale. It was this high school musical duffel bag. Um, when I saw this at the bins, it just reminded me of that time I found that like Y2K Twilight fleece blanket that sold like overnight for $40. I thought, you know, this would definitely, you know, bring back memories for someone or be like a fun throwback piece that someone would want. There were a few holes in it, so I wasn't expecting to get too much. It ended up selling for $15 on Depop and after fees I made $12.26. 
The next thing I had was from a flip lot. It was this new Atag Aiden Maddox silver dress, all sequins. I really thought this would sell for the new year. It would have been perfect for like a new year's wedding or something, but I imagine someone's gonna wear it to a very special event and it's gonna look stunning, I'm sure, because it was a gorgeous dress. I ended up selling for $89 on Poshmark. After fees, I made $71.20. And then after flip consignment fees, I made $22.25. Next, another flip piece, this new Atag Rails Lemon Print Linen Button Up. I think Rails can kind of be hit or miss, but this was such a cute top, great pattern, and it was linen and new Atags, so I knew it was gonna do well. Some of the other pieces I found from them, I might still have like a button up shirt I got at the bins. It's still kind of sitting, so I would definitely comp check before picking it up, but some of their pieces can go for a decent amount of money. This ended up selling for 50 on Poshmark, after Poshmark fees, I made $37.32. And then after flip consignment fees, I made $12.32. Then I sold another piece that my sister-in-law gave me with the stuff she was giving away. It was this pleated score by the brand Warina, which I think is just like an Amazon cheapy brand, but people love skorts. I sold it actually pretty quickly on Mercari once I cross-listed it there. It Once I cross-listed it to Mercari, it sold within like a couple of minutes which was great. I think people still really like that skort trend. I ended up selling for $16 and after fees I made $13.44. Then another flip sale, this Free People Queen of Hearts mini dress. This dress was so cute. Originally I had this listed at like $180, like the comps were very good on it, but because I'm sort of coming to the end of a lot of my flip lots, I just wanted to kind of get things to sell. So when someone offered me 70, I did decide to accept. After posh fees, I made 56. And then after flip consignment fees, I made 17.50. And the last thing I sold on Thursday, another flip piece, these Wilfred joggers, really cute, love Wilfred. It is my favorite Aritzia brand. It does the best for me. Not everything will sell super fast or super well from that brand, but especially they're like, trousers, blazers, really nice sweaters, those definitely will. These took a while to sell, again, almost 90 days. They sold for 40 on Mercari. After Mercari fees, I made 34.34, and then after flip fees, I made 14.34. And then Friday the 6th, I had four sales again. I sold these Allbirds Men's Earth Runners. These, I didn't know when I picked up, but when I got home, I did a bunch of research because I was trying to figure out what color they were and it took a long time but this was actually a limited edition color I want to say from 2020 or maybe 2019 that they did for I want to say endangered birds <laughs> or something like that some some type of bird there was like four different colors based on a bird and these were like the hummingbird very cool very cute they did sit for a little bit. I got these at Goodwill probably a few months ago. I wanna say I spent maybe around 15 on them. They ended up selling for 57 on Poshmark and after fees, I made 42.92. Then I sold these BDD distressed jeans. These I've had for a while. They either came from the bins or a denim thread up box that I've gotten over the years. I've definitely had this for like at least two years. Um, but they were cute, distressed, like bleached and everything. They sold for $22 on Poshmark and after fees, I made $15.88. Then another Mack Weldon sale. I did sell another pair of their Ace sweatpants. I have, I think I already mentioned I have two Mack Weldon pieces left from that. A pair of their sweatpants and a pair of their cargo pants. Um, these were in black and extra large tall. They sold for $32 and after fees, I made $25.60. And again, each pair of pants and that cost about $9.00 but I've definitely made more than just my money back. I've profited probably a bunch on that box. And then the last thing I sold on Friday were these Madewell loafers, which if you saw my last uh, mystery shoe unboxing, you might remember these. I got these in a Madewell slash J. Crew mystery shoe box from Helpsy Source. Uh, it was a really good box, really new shoes. I'm glad I got a pair of loafers. Not all Madewell shoes are gonna do well, but they're loafers I would for sure pick up if I saw them out and about. Um, I probably wouldn't <laughs> shop from Health Sea Source again, not because of the quality of the box, but just for other reasons. If you're interested, you could check out that video, but I'm very glad these sold. They end up selling for $108 in after fees. I made $84.68. 
and I got 10 pairs of shoes in that box and the whole box cost $130. So I've already made more than half the box back. Backs. <laughs> I've already made more than half of the box back <laughs> with just selling that pair of shoes. So I'm really excited about that because I still have nine pairs of shoes left and some of them are getting a lot of attention. A lot of them are summer shoes. So it's good to have those in my closet ready for that season when it comes up. Even for the spring, they'd be really nice. So I'm excited to see how that box does. So yesterday, Saturday the 7th, I had eight sales. I sold another flip piece, these mango high rise pants. These are really cute, stretchy, soft, wide leg pants. Great neutral tan color, which is again, super trendy still. I have had these again for almost 90 days, but I looked at them in my closet. And I'm like, I should cross list those to Depop because I don't cross list everything in my closet to Depop. My Depop is a lot more curated, just like putting things on there that I do think a Depop person would want to buy a little bit more trendy. And I think within a day of me cross-listing it onto Depop, they actually sold and I was shocked because that never happens. I'm never like, oh, this will do well on Depop because I do say that all the time. Um, and it actually sold that quickly. So I am happy about that. They sold for 35 after Depop fees, I made 29.59. And after flip fees, I made $12.09. Then if you guys ever in your reselling closet have a piece that you are just so sick of looking at, like you've had it forever, but for whatever reason, you just like will not let it go. This was that piece for me, this Madewell patch pocket pink sweater. I have probably had this for two years. I just can't get rid of it. I don't know what it is. I'm like, somebody is going to buy it because it would get attention, but I'm like, I am so sick of looking at this sweater. But it finally did sell. It sold for $19. When I saw that this sold, I was literally shocked. I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe it. I gotta get it shipped out immediately. <laughs> um, and it sold, like I said, for 19. And then after fees, I made 13.48. And I probably spent that on that sweater because I got that two years ago when Madewell was still doing really well for me. It was a size extra small, so that was another thing that was just working against it. Then the next thing I sold, another flip piece, these Joe's Distressed Jeans. I love selling Joe's, especially in good condition. I can usually get between 20 and 30 for them. It's just kind of like a bread and butter brand for me. They end up selling for 20. After Poshmark fees, I made 16. And then after flip fees, I made six. Then I sold another flip piece, something I really didn't think was gonna sell. So I'm just so happy it sold for anything. <laughs> It was these Lauren Ralph Lauren white denim pants in a 10 petite, which I cannot sell petites for the life of me. It's like nobody wears petites, which is not true, but it just seems like that. They did end up selling for $10, which I was totally happy about. After Poshmark fees, I made $7.05 and after flip fees, I made $2.05, which was more than I ever thought I would make on these pants. I thought I would just end up sending them back to the person. Then I had my best sell the day on Saturday. It was these Tory Burch black loafers. Again, like I said, loafers are still super trendy. I think I got these out of Savers not long ago and they actually weren't priced up very high. I wanna say they might've been like 12-ish dollars and they had the logo, they were beautiful black leather. They did have some wear to them. I was able to fix them up a little bit, but I did photograph everything, super cute. I wanna say I originally listed these at 150, but someone offered me 100 and I decided to accept. And after fees, I made 80. Then another flip sale, these Levi's 541 men's jeans. There was three men's Levi's in that flip lot that she sent me. One of the flip lots that I have, I should say. There was three men's Levi's jeans and I've sold all three of them, which is, I don't wanna say shocking, but I just don't really pick up men's Levi's anymore. Um, they didn't sell for like an outstanding amount of money, but if I see them at the bins and I can move them for like 18 bucks like this, it might be worth picking up in the future. But yeah, they sold for 18. After posh fees, I made 12.68. And then after flip fees, I made 3.68. And then another flip sale, this new Attack Boys Tommy Hilfiger cardigan. And this sale was actually exciting to me because this came in a lot of five pieces from Flip and I actually sold all five of them once I sold this piece and I was excited because that was actually the first time I've ever fully sold like a whole lot. Usually I sell like most of the things but I'll have to eventually end up sending the rest back to the person. So I was really excited about that. It ended up selling for 18 after posh fees I made 14.40 and then after Flip consignment fees I made 5.40. 
And the last thing I sold yesterday was this new tag Amber Crombie and Fitch tweed mini dress. I actually purchased this for myself, but it was really big on me, which I'm surprised because I think especially like millennials, we remember like Amber Crombie and Fitch when we were young and the sizing was just so small. But to order something and it be too big was kind of shocking. Um, I didn't actually spend anything on the dress. I would have just returned it to Amber Crombie and Fitch, but I was lazy and it was too late. And I was like, I might as well just resell it because it's still new and cute and trendy and a good size. And I could probably make some money on it because I actually didn't spend anything on it because I was doing those thread up partner kits, getting um, Amber Crombie and Fitch credit for sending in my personal clothing. So I was getting gift cards so that all the stuff was free. So that was nice. Uh, it did sell pretty quickly. It sold within a couple of days. It sold for $54 and then after fees I made $41.48. So my gross total for this week, the first week of January was $1,220. And then after site fees and all that, my net total for this week was $748.96, which I'm very happy about. A great way to start this year. Um, I don't really have any monetary goals set for me yet this year. I just kind of need to get like my business and my clothes and my office in order and then I can kind of move on with being like oh I want to hit x amount per week and this is how I'm gonna do it. I just need to figure things out and then hopefully be able to set those goals for myself. But yeah, I'd love to know what your New Year's resolutions are and how they're going. I'd love to know how your week was. Do you think sales have picked up? Or are they still being kind of slow? Because I can also picture that. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great time sourcing and selling this week. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye!